so I think, I hope that the blinds are not in my face. a bit um, from my last video and I guess I'm ready to talk about it. So I think that after everything that you know I wouldn't have gotten to where I've gotten today without you know overcoming my mountain and climbing it and getting to that top because I was brought down to the lowest point imaginable um, through this illness. Like you can't possibly begin to imagine what things have been like and it's so hard for me to sit here and try to explain like how bad it was and how hard it was and still is but you know it's not easy for me to sit here and try to give um, a good explanation for because it was hell. It was all so so hard to overcome things when I didn't want to. So I guess I'll back up a little bit. Um, back in like November um, of last year, I might have already talked about this. I and it's really embarrassing for me to talk about. I was agoraphobic. Um, and now it's out there. I wasn't able to leave my house. Um, I wasn't driving. I hadn't drove for like six months. It was hard for me to even see old friends. Just because like how I thought like how do you come back from that? How do you try to reestablish friendships and connections? It's not because you want it to be. I wasn't being lazy. I just physically couldn't get out of Okay guys, so right here my camera cuts out, so I'm just giving you guys a warning to continue on with the new video and forget what I was saying here. <laughs> my SD card is full and I can't find my other ones for some reason. I probably should have done this like ahead of time. And here Hazel decides to scratch herself. I was disgusted. Please bear with me because my audio does not match up with my lips at all. At first how, you know, difficult it was, and it was, it was so hard for me to accept it and I was just stuck in this endless cycle of denial and not wanting to accept this is my new normal and this is who I'm going to be for a while. I might not get a, you know, a very solid answer on everything and I might be stuck in this cycle of doctors and medications, you know, setbacks and flare-ups and losing friends and gaining new ones and it was just so hard for me at the time because I had to you know, take a medical leave from college and tell myself that everything was going to be okay. So it was just really hard for me because I just felt so alone and that nobody could relate to me and, um, you know, I didn't have anyone that understood exactly what I was going through and my friends at the time just couldn't accept that this could be me and I learned when I hit rock bottom, my rock bottom, and that it's okay, you know, and it's okay to not be okay. And I know that's a very cliche saying, but it's so true that it is okay. It's okay to fall down and it's okay to feel like shit and hate yourself and scream about it and cry about it, but it's not okay to stay like that. It's not okay to keep telling yourself that you're not enough and keep telling yourself and believing from other people that you won't get better or that you're doing things for attention because I think that's what hurt me the most is I felt like people felt like what I was doing was for attention and that was really really hard for me to try to prove to everyone you know that I'm not doing this for attention that this is me. I'm trying to figure out ways to cope and to get through things. And for me, that meant getting a cane, using my cane in stores, 
getting around in general, outside on walks, or mail from the mailbox, and getting looks from other 20-year-olds and even older people. Why the hell do you need a cane? When I'd go to the grocery store and use one of those electric wheelchair things and get the looks from people, but I needed it because if I didn't, I would drop attack and then be really embarrassed because I fell and people think that I'm on drugs or something else, you know? And I was sick of pain that it left me inside of just pretending that everything was fine when inside I was screaming. That's what urged me to get a cane. It is what's best for me and it is so random my attacks. It's not like I can plan it out exactly my day of how it's gonna go and think you know everything's gonna be great and I'm feeling great right now so I'll feel great the rest of the day. Well that's not the case and I can have an attack once a day, 50 times a day, or not at all. It's really, really random, and that's why I use it, is just because sometimes, you know, I'm pretty good at walking outside now, but as soon as I get into buildings, that's when my guard goes on. Because of so many times that I've had issues being in stores, it's difficult. I wish I didn't have to have one and use one at all. It just gives me the best security. If I do fall, or if I do get vertigo and when it happens it's mostly like things start to spin slow and then it can build up fast. It's usually fluorescent lights trigger it, um, busy environments, lots of patterns and color and things in stores. So that means usually lots of stores. It's difficult because again it's random and sometimes I'll be fine and sometimes I won't and I'll bring it pretty much everywhere I go or somewhere that's really hot and that's been my best coping mechanism, I feel like, and my greatest achievement, but it's still difficult for me. The acceptance from the general public, because wherever I go, I've had people ask me, oh, what happened to your leg? <sighs> okay, pill time. Anyway, people talk about my injury, ask me what happened to my foot or my ankle or my leg. It's just frustrating at times because people automatically assume you have a leg injury, get, like it's difficult for people that I'm with too. This is what works best for me. And I hope that other people that are watching this that have dizziness problems or vertigo problems are able to overcome the stigma as well. That canes aren't just, you know, you're old and you need them to walk. Young people need them too. You know, it doesn't matter the age. And the other thing is just like a concoction of medications that I've found that have worked for me. I mean, it's been a year and a half-ish now. I've had plenty of time to try medication and fail. And my body didn't hate myself for trying it. And my side effects finally started to kind of go away. Still trying new ones, so that's another important thing is if you fail at a medication, don't give up. I have tried almost everything in the class of medications that I can try. I've tried anti-seizure meds, calcium channel blocker, no beta blockers yet, just regular like SSRI, benzos. Um, just regular migraine medications like antihistamine. I don't know what you would classify meclizine as, but yeah, so I've tried a ton of different medications. I forgot to add in at this point that I have also tried tricyclics. Probably like 12 or 14 different medications that I've tried. Maybe even more. So I found a few that have worked. So yeah, I wish someone would have told me that exercise and staying busy and active was important. I just sat in bed and I closed myself in and just wanted my world to stop spinning. But once I started actually exercising and gaining more confidence and walking farther and farther each day, those little achievements, you know, are extremely, extremely important, especially with dealing what you know, we deal with on a daily basis. After, you know, practicing walking and then my dizziness would get less and less walking, I tried going into stores. Again, it's just practice and pushing yourself beyond your limitations or at least what you think your limitations are because you'd be amazed at how far you can push yourself. And I don't want to just let it win and let it take over my life to be able to go back to college and take classes like a normal college student. Like getting myself back into normality and getting back on a schedule is important for me at least. I'm not recovered by all means. This isn't a recovery story. This isn't a 
you know, I'm cured story. This is just a I'm coping the best I can. I hope that this kind of helps anyone out that feels lost. If change happened in my life so quick. I lost friends and doctors just said you're crazy and it's all in your head. You know, I was going to ER so many times. Like I went so many times in the first two, three months that I was experiencing symptoms for panic attacks. I didn't know what a panic attack was. So I was just kind of like, I'm dying, <laughs> help me. Figure out what's going on with me and understand that the change in your life that's happening is okay and that it's normal in a sense with people that have chronic illness to expect change to happen so quickly and so fast. Experience lots of loss in many ways and it's extremely crippling to deal with it and once depression sets in and you and you don't know how to deal with it and you don't know how to manage it I guess and how to cope with that on top of your chronic illness. An endless battle cycle every single day. It's scary took so much time for me to just accept it. This could be my life forever. It's so scary thinking that this really could be my life forever. It all takes a long time getting used to all of this and getting used to this new life. I've met so many amazing people. They're like a little family to me and I could not thank all of them enough for making me feel more sane. <laughs> not that this is all in my head. We don't know what tomorrow will bring or next month or next year. You know, having a diagnosis, even though some people think it's a crazy that you're seeking so many doctors out and answers, is such a breath of relief. And educate yourself more as well as other people and spread awareness about it. Not a lot of people know about it and think, oh, well, I've been dizzy before or, oh, yeah, I've gotten lightheaded once or twice, you know, and that sort of thing or had, or I know someone that has vertigo and that sort of thing. And it's different when you're having it every single day. To anyone that is still struggling to find an answer, keep searching. Keep advocating for yourself or you feel like giving up, but there is so much more to life than you think. It all starts with taking a step. You, know, you will get better. What we live on is hope. You take time for you out of your day. Do what you can to support yourself and take care of yourself. I hope that this helps people um, that are still struggling with this diagnosis and accepting this. If you keep telling yourself that you're not going to get better, you won't. Love yourself a little more than you did yesterday. And I hope that this helps you guys and I will update soon. Alright, bye!